All right, this is review, uh, let's see, review 2B. Okay, my pen's acting up, so I'm not sure how this is going to go. Review 2B, uh, question number six. All right, so here we go. We've got a sketch of this function right here. I'm making a video, Alex. Uh, i got a sketch of this function right here. Um, it's a trigonometric function. It's cosine. Uh, we got a max and we have a min, and they want us to write down some values. So write down the value of r. Well, with any, any function, a constant that is housed within parentheses with the variable x is going to cause a horizontal shift. So um, if you think of the cosine curve, the cosine curve always starts out, it looks like this, and it starts out, just your basic y equals cosine x, it starts out at 1 at the very top, and then it goes down. Well, here's that point, that maximum point where it really starts, and usually it hits the y-axis unless there's a horizontal shift, which there is. And how far did it shift? It shifted 4 units to the right, and you know with functions, it's of the form x minus um, k or r or whatever. Um, so... Um, it's going to be the opposite since the general form is minus, um, opposite of the direction it, 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 it's, it's shifting. And so since it's shifting four to the right, the value of r is actually negative four. Okay. Now p is the amplitude, and the amplitude is the, um, let's see, the distance from the principal axis, which in this case I happen to know it's 10, to a max or a min. So from here to here or from here to here. It's halfway between. It's a distance here. If you can't eyeball it, then all you have to do is take a y max. Oops, I can't do it like that. So for bi, all you have to do is take a y max minus a y min and divide it by 2. So in this case, that would be 18 minus 2 over 2, which is equal to 8. So that's what the amplitude is um, for p, or for the function, the amplitude is 8. Okay. Now q, the, the general form of a trigonometric function is a cosine uh, b x uh, uh, x minus c, or x plus, whatever, um, plus d, okay? And this affects the period of the function, okay? So if you remember, the period is equal to 2 pi over b, whatever that, uh, whatever that um, uh, coefficient is. In this case, we're calling it q. Okay, so in order to be able to find q, we're going to have to be able to find the period. Now remember... Trigonometric functions are periodic. They go like that. Okay, So if I just looked at my sine wave, one period would be like from here to here. A uh, cosine wave would go from you know a period, if we start on the x-axis, would be go here to here. And then it just starts repeating forever and ever and ever. Okay, So um, if you take, it's easier to see it with a sine curve. If you... There's one period of a sine curve. But we don't have a full period here, so we can't really tell. Um, but if you were to take from here to here, from a max to a min, the horizontal distance from here to here, that's half of the period. The rest is made up here and then here. That's why they're periodic functions. They're very symmetrical. So what you can do um, to find the period... Uh, sorry about my pen, it's equal to um, the difference in the x terms. Um, so if I did 16 minus 4, ah, that's equal to 12. Okay, But that's only the distance from this max, the horizontal distance, to this min. And remember, it has to cycle one more time to get to the other max. That's going to be another 12 units. That's one cycle. If you think about this going up like this, that would be one period. 
But since it's symmetrical, I know that um, I'm going to multiply it by 2 and get the 24. So that's where they get the period of 24 from. Okay, And then I know that the period equals 2 pi over b. And so then I know that the period is 24 is equal to 2 pi over q. And I solve that. Sorry about this mess here. Uh, 24q equals 2 pi, and q equals pi over 12. Giddy up. Okay. So now that we have all that, we know that our function f of x is equal to my amplitude, which is 8, times the cosine of, um, what's q? Pi over 12 times x minus 4, I guess that's a plus, sorry, x minus 4, um, and we didn't, oh, plus 10, plus 10, they already gave us the vertical shift. And now they want to say, when is that equal to 7? So here's how you do that, you just graph f of x equals 7 and f equals that function and um, see where they intersect. So that's 8 cosine pi over 12. I'm writing it down so I don't have to go back and forth. x minus 4 plus 10. So I'm going to go here to my handy dandy calculator. And I need a graph. Um, I want to make sure I'm going to go to menu, make sure my settings, my graphing angle is in radians. Make sure you do that. Okay. And so what did I have? 8 cosine pi over 12 times x minus 4 with a vertical shift of 10. Boom, chugga lugga lugga. Okay. And I need to see this a little bit more. So I'll go up uh, to, I don't know what, 24. Okay, and then I'll go out here. The period was 24, so maybe I'll go out to 30. It doesn't really matter at this point. And so I need to go f of x is equal to 7. So I'm going to graph that, tab, um, 7, boom. And so i got to find the intersection points, and I forget if we had a specified... Oh, it's for 0, less than or x, less than, or tw less than to, but, uh, 20. That's my domain. So I only need to go up to 20 for my solutions. So I'll get my intersections, menu, analyze graph, intersection, boom, boom. So I get 11.5. I'm not sure where that is. Menu, analyze graph, intersection, boom, boom. And 20.5. So that's out of the domain. So my only solution is... Um, for this, f of x equal to 7, um, x equals 11.5, and then you need to be sure to include a sketch of the graph. What was it like? Oh, there it is. Where you show this and show that as 11.57 um, to justify your answer. All right, that is it. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you next time.